the interior of a conference room of a two-story building with several chairs and large windows. A woman, about 30 years old, dark long hair, wearing a black blouse, skirt in the same color. On the legs, probably slightly translucent, flesh-colored tights and pumps made of leather or imitation leather in black on a medium height, thin post. The position of both legs lowered to the ground predominates. More often, the left foot loses contact with the footwear, although it never leaves it completely. The first mass extinction, about 550 million years ago, was caused by a lack of oxygen. Decreased global oxygen availability led to the first mass extinction of animals, which claimed 80% of the world's population. Species that existed on Earth at the time, according to a new study. This event took place at the end of the Ediacaran period, about 550 million years ago. A new study by geobiologists at the Virginia Tech College of Science suggests that the first mass extinction of species occurred about 550 million years ago. Scott Evans, who led the research, stated that this extinction led to the extinction of 80% of the world's population. Species that lived on Earth during the Ediacaran period. This included the loss of many different types of animals, but those that particularly relied on significant amounts of oxygen were the hardest hit. This suggests that the extinction was controlled by the environment, like all other mass extinctions in history, Evans said. Environmental changes, such as global warming and a decrease in oxygen availability could lead to mass animal extinctions and profound disruption and reorganization of ecosystems, said Xu Hai Seo of the Virginia Tech College of Sciences Department of Earth Sciences. This has been proven many times in the study of Earth's history, including work on the first extinction documented in the fossil record. This study therefore informs us about the long-term impact of current environmental changes on the biosphere, he added. What exactly caused oxygen levels to drop half a billion years ago? This is still a topic for discussion. The short answer to how it happened is that we don't really know, Evans said. It could have been massive volcanic eruptions, tectonic plate movements, asteroid impacts, or a combination of these phenomena. But we see that animals that became extinct seem to respond to decreased global oxygen availability. Evans and CO's study is more relevant than you might think. In another study, Virginia Tech scientists found that a decrease in oxygen availability affects aquatic ecosystems. Reason? Warming of waters caused by climate change and excessive runoff of pollutants from land use. Warming waters reduce the oxygen holding capacity of freshwater, while nutrient decomposition by freshwater microbes consumes oxygen. Our study shows that, as with all other mass extinctions in Earth's past, this newly discovered first animal mass extinction was caused by a major climate change. This is another in a long list of warnings showing the dangers of our current climate crisis, Evans said. Ediacaran lasted about 94 million years, from about 635 to 541 million years ago. It was preceded by the Cryogen and followed by the Cambrian. There are five mass extinctions of species. The Ordovician extinction, which took place about 438 million years ago. The Devonian extinction, about 374 million years ago. The Permian extinction, about 250 million years ago. The Triassic extinction, about 201 million years ago. And the Cretaceous extinction which occurred about 66 million years ago. The mass extinctions are recognized as significant steps in the evolutionary trajectory of life on this planet, Evans and team wrote in the paper. Whatever the cause of the mass extinction, 
Numerous major changes in environmental conditions have been the result. In particular, we find support for reduced global oxygen availability as the mechanism responsible for this extinction. This suggests that abiotic control has had a significant impact on diversity patterns over hundreds of millions of years of Earth's animal history, the authors of the paper said. Fossils from this period tell us what the creatures that died in this extinction looked like. According to Evans, they looked strange. These organisms appear so early in the evolutionary history of animals that in many cases they look like they're experimenting with different ways to build large, sometimes mobile, multicellular bodies, Evans said. There are many ways to recreate their appearance. But the most important thing is that the fossils found before this extinction often do not match the ways we classify animals today. Essentially, this extinction may have helped pave the way for the evolution of animals as we know them, he noted. The Webb telescope captures new details of the galaxy Messier 74. The James Webb Space Telescope has pointed its lens at the galaxy Messier 74, M74, resulting in a stunningly detailed image of one of the most spectacular galaxies visible from Earth. Webb revealed filaments of gas and dust in the spiral arms and showed an unobstructed view of a star cluster at the center of the galaxy. This galaxy was also imaged by the Hubble Telescope. Data from both observatories complement each other, and provide a comprehensive view of M74. Galaxy M74, also known as NGC 628 or PGC 5974, is about 32 million light-years away in the constellation of Pisces and is oriented so that we can see it from Earth in all its glory. This galaxy has two distinct spiral arms. Unlike the patchy and jagged structure seen in some other spiral galaxies, the prominent arms make this object one of the favorite targets of astronomers studying the origin and structure of spiral galaxies. The James Webb Space Telescope stared at M74 with its MIRI, mid-infrared instrument, camera and spectrograph operating in the mid to long infrared range 5 to 28 microns, to learn more about the earliest stages of star formation. These observations are part of a larger effort to image 19 nearby star-forming galaxies in infrared light. This project is carried out as part of the international cooperation PHANGS. Physics at high angular resolution in near galaxies. These galaxies have already been observed with the Hubble Space Telescope and ground based observatories. Adding the extremely detailed observations with the Webb Telescope will allow astronomers to pinpoint star forming regions in galaxies, accurately measure the mass and age of star clusters, and gain insights into the nature of the tiny specks of dust drifting through interstellar space. The technologies used in the Webb Telescope allowed for extremely detailed imaging of the object. Webb's sharp vision revealed fine filaments of gas and dust in magnificent spiral arms that curl outward from the center of this image. The lack of gas in the central region also provides an unobstructed view of the star clusters at the heart of the galaxy, NASA and ESA said in a statement. Webb's photo shows bright pinkish-blue filaments of gas and dust swirling around the galaxy's bright blue heart, but M74 was previously imaged by the Hubble Space Telescope, which captured the galaxy's blue-pink spiral arms, but the object's heart came out fuzzy. Without clear details, Hubble's ultraviolet and visible light capabilities complement Webb's unparalleled infrared sensitivity, as do observations from ground-based radio telescopes such as ALMA. By combining data from telescopes operating across the electromagnetic spectrum, 
scientists can gain a better view of astronomical objects than using a single observatory, even one as powerful as Webb's. The James Webb Space Telescope JWST, was launched into space on December 25 last year. It is the newest space observatory and explores the cosmos in the near to mid-infrared wavelength range. It has the potential to change the face of astronomy. Scientists hope this powerful observatory will give them a glimpse into the most distant galaxies ever seen. Into the atmospheres of distant planets and the dust-shrouded hearts of star-forming regions. The successor to the legendary Hubble telescope was designed to focus on infrared light, giving astronomers the opportunity to look at the earliest moments of the universe's existence. This is due, among others, to a 6.5-meter main mirror composed of gold-plated beryllium hexagonal panels. The James Webb Telescope is up to 100 times more powerful than its predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope, which has changed our understanding of the cosmos over the past 30-plus years. The leap second is history. The word, leap, is associated primarily with February 29th. Meanwhile, for decades, extra seconds have been added to our official time to synchronize it with solar time. However, everything indicates that the time of the leap second is coming to an end. The practice of adding a leap second to official clocks to keep them in sync with the Earth's rotation will stop no later than 2035. This was determined by representatives of governments and various scientific organizations. This means that from 2035, and possibly sooner, astronomical time, which is determined by the Earth's rotation, may differ by more than one second from coordinated universal time, which is based on the fixed tick of atomic clocks. Since 1972, whenever the two time systems are more than 0.9 seconds apart, a leap second is added to UTC time. So far, leap seconds have been used to synchronize solar time with Earth's coordinated universal time, UTC, based on the atomic clock. But where did the need to add them come from? Well, over time, the rotation of the Earth gradually slows down, which translates into a deepening difference between solar time and the time that we measure with the devices at our disposal. The result is that a whole minute can be deposited in this way over the course of a century, while every 5,000 years, we would even have an hour difference. Starting in 1972, additional seconds began to be added. However, this practice met with increasing criticism, because advanced devices used, for example, in satellite navigation or aviation require extremely accurate time measurement. It turned out that the very idea of introducing leap seconds can be a source of additional problems. Due to them, there may be anomalies in the functioning of computer systems, which may adversely affect, for example, energy transmission or financial transactions. However, this is particularly problematic in the case of the aforementioned aviation. Well, depending on the airlines and the computer systems they used, leap seconds were added in different ways. Because it is not coordinated on a global scale, even units of time that are so small from our perspective have, as it turns out, enormous importance in the case of various computerized areas of our lives. So far, a total of 10 leap seconds have been added on a regular basis since 1972. In addition, over the years, it was also decided to add such seconds in 27 situations where the two times mentioned at the beginning began to differ by more than 0.9 seconds. And there are many indications that this state of affairs will not change much.
a meeting attended by both scientists and representatives of government agencies was devoted to the issue of the future of the leap second. It took place during a conference organized in France by the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, Bureau International des Poids et Mesures, BIPM. It was decided that starting from 2035, leap seconds will no longer be added. So what is the proposed alternative to this system? The previous one was practically imperceptible to us on a daily basis and we should not feel the new version either. The exact methodology for filling in the missing time will still be determined. But it is possible that this time scientists and institutions will decide on a variant based on accumulating seconds to be added over time, say, age or until we accumulate, for example, a minute. Rather than adding them all the time, we will be able to notice such a change in certain circumstances. Vegan doesn't always mean healthy. Not every vegetarian or vegan meal is immediately healthy. There are many ultra-processed plant-derived foods that can be harmful in the long run. Unfortunately, According to research, vegans and vegetarians consume quite a lot of such food. A nicely packed bar or cereal flakes with glucose fructose syrup, emulsifiers, preservatives, dyes and artificial flavors is not the best idea. While they may look healthy, or even be advertised as slimming, you should think twice before eating them. A group of researchers from the University of Navarre followed 20,000 people for 15 years. Volunteers aged 20 to 91, analyzing, among others, consumption of over hundreds of different food products. The researchers wanted to test the effect of ultra-processed food on overall risk of death. The results showed clearly that it is better to avoid such food. Higher consumption of ultra-processed food, more than four servings per day, was independently associated with 62% higher risk of dying from any cause. For each additional serving, the risk of death increased by 18%. Write scientists in a paper published in the journal, the BMJ. This is the result that emerged after taking into account the number of calories consumed. This indicates that the very composition of such food, even without caloric excess, can be harmful. One of the probable reasons for the higher risk of death is impaired metabolism. This hypothesis is supported by the work of scientists from the University of Sao Paulo, who analyzed 30 studies involving different populations. Conducted in terms of the impact of highly processed food on metabolic health, the occurrence of metabolic syndrome, changes in body weight and risk of obesity, hypertension, glucose levels, insulin resistance, the development of type 2 diabetes, and mortality. In total, over 100,000 people participated in these projects. People over the age of 18. While the studies couldn't pinpoint causality with certainty, the researchers write, most of the new results showed a detrimental effect of high consumption of ultra-processed foods on metabolic health, including cardiovascular disease risk and mortality. Growing scientific evidence points to the need to reduce global consumption of highly processed foods at different stages of life. Studies also indicate the association of ultra-processed food with allergies, cancer, depression, digestive system disorders, senile frailty syndrome. The advantages of a vegetarian or vegan diet are often mentioned, possibly pointing to possible deficiencies that occur with a poorly designed menu. However, it is also worth noting that many highly processed and, as it turns out, popular products are made from plants.
experts from the University of Paris and other well-known French research centers checked the share of ultra-processed food in several groups of people eating different diets, including meat, fish vegetarian, vegetarian and vegan. First, they found that in vegetarian diets, the less animal products they ate, the more healthy ingredients they ate. However, the case with ultra-processed foods was different. These ingredients accounted for 33%. Fish vegetarian diet, 32.5%. Vegetarian, 37%. Vegetarian and as much as 39.5% vegan. Young people ate more highly processed products. Not all vegan diets necessarily confer health benefits due to the potential detrimental effects of ultra-processed foods on the quality and health benefits of such a diet, the researchers conclude. In turn, the analysis of the habits of a small group of 129 vegans conducted at Liverpool John Moores University showed three styles of nutrition convenient, 26.8%, traditional, 22%, and health-oriented, 51.2%. The first two styles, comprising almost half of the participants in total, contained a large amount of ultra-processed products, such as snacks, vegan sweets and desserts, and sauces. How to catch it? Intuition will tell a lot, but you can rely on the classification developed by the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO. According to this United Nations agency, unprocessed, natural ingredients include, for example, plant parts, fruits, leaves, stems, roots, seeds, or elements derived from animals, mussels, eggs, milk, as well as, for example, mushrooms or algae. Minimally processed foods are transformed by simple operations such as removing unwanted parts, drying, freezing, crushing, grinding, baking, cooking, fermenting, and pasteurizing. Experts highlight the slight difference between unprocessed and minimally processed foods. In processed food, however, you can find products such as fruit in syrup, pickled vegetables, in a can or bottle, ham, bacon, smoked fish, bread, cheese. Ingredients such as salt, oil, butter and sugar are often added to this type of product. There is another group, ultra-processed foods. Most often it is created as a result of complex industrial processes. From the basic natural raw materials. Individual components are usually extracted, sugars, fats, proteins, or fiber. They are often obtained from several sources rich in a given substance, e.g. corn, wheat, soybeans, or parts of animals. The substances used usually go through a complex chemical treatment. The resulting products are often rich in sugar, fat and salt, dyes, aromas, emulsifiers. Preservatives and other substances are often added to the whole. Finished products are usually placed in eye-catching, attractive packaging made of synthetic materials. Such products include sweet drinks, sweet, fatty or salty snacks, candies, cookies, industrially highly processed meat, sausages, as well as powdered soups, some cheeses, pasta, mass-produced, packaged bread, margarines, breakfast cereals, fruit yogurts, even baby food. It is worth remembering that different products, although they belong to the same category, may differ from each other. For example, cold cuts or cheese may be more or less natural. In the recognition of highly processed food, it will be helpful to check the composition presented on the packaging. For example, industrially made bread consisting only of flour, water, salt and yeast is considered rather processed food. 
but one with the addition of emulsifiers and dyes can already be considered an ultra-processed product. Pure oatmeal is a minimally processed food, but e.g. flakes with added sugar and dyes, ultra-processed. It is worth paying special attention to the elements that are not usually used in the kitchen, including those that give the product a special additional taste, aroma or texture. Generally, the less additives a food contains, the more natural it is. The interior of a conference room of a two-story building with several chairs and large windows. A woman, about 30 years old, dark long hair, wearing a black blouse, skirt in the same color. On the legs, probably slightly translucent flesh-colored tights and pumps made of leather or imitation leather in black on a medium height, thin post. The position of both legs lowered to the ground predominates. More often, the left foot loses contact with the footwear, although it never leaves it completely.